So welcome back, friends. Now we move on the second phase of this presentation. So we are going to start with the formulation aspect of the ethyl pyruvate uh, formulation for the that is for the application for the healing in the radiation dermatitis. Uh, we, we prepared the uh, hydrogel of uh, ethyl pyruvate. So the first question arises: Why hydrogel? So we know that hydrogen is a uh, kind of a you know material which is you know polymeric material so it has a very good water retention capacity so it is being believed and it is also been observed uh, in many uh, you know uh, cases that if you uh, you know maintain a good moisture balance uh, in the injured tissue part so the healing is fast and uh, Therefore, uh, you know, the hydrogel concept was, you know, being in, comes into picture, and with that aim, we have chosen the uh, hydrogel formulation uh, in this work. So, how did we prepare the hydrogel? So, we prepared a, a you know one percent carbapol dispersed in water, and uh, you know, with with uh, you know this uh, continuous stirring till it becomes thickened. Then we neutralize it with the triethyl amine. Then we prepared a, another solution of phospholipid and ethyl pyruvate at a ratio uh, one to one in methanol. Then we allowed it to evaporate in a rotary evaporator, and then we add the saline and the residue with the stirring at uh, you know, 60 degree centigrade and uh, for a time period of 45 minutes. And in the last step. The lysosomal and the EP preparation added up into the carbapol. Excellent. So then, uh, you know, in the physical uh, appearance-wise, we can see that uh, here uh, this is a placebo. So it is a you know very transparent uh, gel. So after the you know completion of the formulation, uh, the two percent uh, weight by weight ethyl pyruvate here the formulation looks like this. Uh, thereafter, we uh, you know we did the temp imaging of the ethyl pyruvate hydrogen to you know verify the size. So the size was found to be in a nano range and very well dispersed. You see that so very well dispersed. So uh, you know then we uh, went for the uh, physical evaluation. Uh, for example, like uh, here. Uh, oh, before the going to the physical uh, you know uh, evaluation, we go we went for the in vitro drug diffusion study. So like, uh, what is the, is uh, the EP is releasing from this formulation on a, uh, in a sustainable man, uh, manner. So we allow it to, uh, you know, see it on the hour basis time. And we see that from this graph that it uh, around up to 10 hours, the release is, is linear. Then after this, it becomes uh, slightly, you know, sluggish. So, uh, with this, uh, you know, graph, it is statistically indicated that the EP is releasing in a sustainable in, in a sustainable manner from the hydrogel. So this decide the frequency of the application. Then uh, uh, we uh, perform the physical evaluation of uh, ethyl pyruvate hydrogel formulation uh, for a time period of three months with a storage condition at maintained at 25 degrees centigrade and relative humidity of 60%. So we have a, you know, dedicated humidity chambers where we uh, cap these formulations. And what we find, uh, we, may, we we observe the three parameters, color, appearance, credibility, pH, and extrudibility. And uh, what we have uh, found for the four uh, formulation, like uh, in which the, the composition of AP is and 2%, 0.5%, 1%, and 2%. The color remains same off white after three months. And the appearance wise, they look very homogeneous after three months uh, of all the four compositions. Then the spreadability is minimally increased, you know, uh, point, uh, you know, 18.59, then it becomes 19.05. So, you know, it is marginally increased in the spreadability. The pH almost remains same since the pH of the skin is around, uh, you know, neutral. So uh, here it is, uh, you know, slightly, you know, 
alkaline or sorry basic which, which is slightly basic so it is almost uh, suited to the ph of the skin uh, uh its suitability is almost remains same so in you know, overall uh, the conclusion for this study is that the the, the formulation uh, remains same for you know over a 3 month time period so this its formulation that, that what we we, we 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 wish to achieve that the you know stable uh, you know sustainable released you know release of the drugs is we achieve from these formulations so then we went for the the third objective which is called the dermal toxicity uh, study as per the OECD guideline in adult uh, spag doggy rats and uh, what we have done that we have taken the animal and we cleared up the, uh, the hair uh, over on the dorsal part of the uh, body then we applied the cream and uh, we uh, we have uh, this is done for repeated application and we have observed uh, that uh, there was no sign of etherema, edema, anything uh, which you, you know, the, that is uh, indicated is not, uh, not observable over a time period of 21 days. So this is the pictures taken for the animals which have been treated with the 2% ethyl pyruvate hydrogen. And you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can yourself observe there is no visual sign of toxic skin toxicity. Thereafter, we also observed the uh, the average body weight of rats uh, in rams. So, if you see for you know one percent ethyl pyruvate or two percent ethyl uh, ethyl pyruvate or vehicle or control, so they were almost found to be overlapping each other, and there was no you know significant decrease or increase in the body weights. So, with the average constant body weight, it uh, it, 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 it 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 can be you know uh, confirmed that up. They are, uh, the the ethyl pyruvate dermal application have no uh, toxicity on the rat in, uh, yeah, you know physiology. So we also prepared the hematological parameters and the biochemistry parameters for the uh, from the blood samples that have been drawn in the uh, spare body red after the completion of the studies for the uh, determination of systemic uh, toxicity. And we can see in the hematological parameter which is a whole body, uh, sorry, uh, white blood cells, red blood cells, and, uh, you know, many other parameters, they were fall within the reference range. They are fall within the reference range, as mentioned in the IAC guideline, and the, you know, one we have taken from the international, it is Mary Alligis and Charles P. Clifford, uh, which had, they have published the uh, reference interval for these, uh, for these, you know, parameters. So similarly, we have find for the biochemical parameters for urea, albumin, and glucose, they are found to be in the, within the, you know, reference region. So there is no sign of, uh, you know, systemic uh, toxicity in these rats which have been treated with the 2% uh, ethyl uh, pyruvate hydrogen. So now let's move to the second slide. Uh, like, for example, this is one again for the, you know, uh, the picture showing that the physical observation uh, for dermal toxicity of ethyl pyruvate hydrogel on spread dolly rates for 21 days. And there was no sign of inflammation, edema, irritation, etc. etc. So this is over a period of 7 days, 14 days and 21 days. So hence this proof that this drug is safe on skin. We have also taken up the you know skin sample of the uh, of the of the rat after the completion studies and we have uh, uh, analyzed it through the SEM imaging because as we know that SEM is uh, known for the surface morphology and we have seen that in all the sample which uh, we, we have collected from control and 1% treated and 2% treated had got that what we have observed there was no significant variation in the microstructure of the skin so as it uh, confirmed that uh, it is uh, the malignant safe on rat. In the cell culture part, uh, we have just uh, performed one study, which is a uh, amputity assay and SRB assay, just to confirm that whether it can cause some cell toxicity in the fibroblast cell. So fibroblast cell is one of the constituents of the skin, and we have seen that there is no such, you know, a visual effect uh, of toxicity in these cells lines. So hence we can see that, hence we can confirm that there is presumed to be, you know, dermally very very safe.
now let's move to the last part of the study uh, before beginning to analyze in the uh, result part i would like to show uh, you what is the setup for the radiation to create the radiation dermatitis in in rat uh, using this cartoon so we have a uh, you know co cobalt teletherapy active uh, teletherapy machine and with the help of our designated rsos we have planned the studies so we have created a, we have just through the measurements we have uh, we have covered the whole rat with a lead shield so that we can cover only this portion of the dorsal part and then with the calculation as suggested by the radiation safety officers we have irradiated this portion of the uh, rat to create the radiation dermatitis so this take a couple of days to create a radiation burn on the rat skin and it was around 45 gray or some so was used uh, in a cumulative way to create the such you know radiation burn so this is is a picture uh, of the burns uh, which have been taken over at 7 day 14 day 35 days and 42 days so the time period was around 42 days and this is for the different groups one for control one for placebo placebo is one hydrogen which no uh, with no ethyl pyruvate standard in standard we have taken the vaseline then we have prepared the four formulation 0.2% 0.5% 1% and 2% so over the seven day period times and uh, for it so there were uh, you know you know we, we can see that uh, in the case of 2% Uh, over seven day time you know they have is covered by the hair follicle but yes the redness is there in 14 days time still redness and uh, you know dry dis formation is there but when the time period study reached to 42 days then we can you know see we can observe that the skin is perfectly healed with you know hair follicles covered no sign of edema no sign of any dis formation so we can see that over a 42 uh, days time period after the irradiation ethyl pyruvate 2% is able to heal up the radiation burn so this is the study is for the mitigation aspect uh, this is we have done uh, with that with this back to the victims if somebody got into a place of radi radiation emergency and uh, get a radiation burn that in that that is we can apply the uh, the ethyl pyruvate over a period of times and this we have done for you know 42 days we have continuously applied the ethyl pyruvate for 42 days and what we observed that at 42 days time period we able to heal up the the radiation burn part so then uh, uh, the observation wise we have again the, we have calculated the other parameters like what is the wound area contraction so we can see from this control part Uh, over a 42 days time period in control the wound contraction was 200% then uh, uh, for the uh, for the standard it is around uh, see around uh, around uh, almost same 200% but uh, it, uh, if you goes to the uh, to the ethyl pyruvate point uh, 0.5% then the wound contraction is around uh, uh, around in between the 300 to 400% Into four hundred percent, so this suggested that yes, the ethyl pyruvate is working, is working, uh, and a, and it enhances the wound contraction percentage. The skin damage score is another parameter, and and another secondary derivative, uh, you know, uh, derivatization of data. So we can see that yes, in case of you know one percent and two percent ethyl pyruvate, we suggest to control. You able to score less skin damage score. uh in fact it is less than 1% it so it is less than 1 so we can see that yes uh, this uh, drug is working fine in uh, mitigation purposes then we have uh, measured the uh, protein content and the methyl dialdehyde uh, content and hydroxyproline and collagen content in the uh, healed uh, tissue part and what we have seen that when the drug is treated 200 uh, 2% of ethyl pyruvate then the protein content is is uh, is high 
as uh, correspondingly the MDA concentration in micromolar is low and we also know that the collagen is the you know what are the in integrity and integrity of the, uh, of the repaired tissue is because of collagen and hydroxyproline is one of the constituent of collagen so both hydroxyproline and collagen content were found to be uh, significantly higher in 2% ethyl pyruvate. So these biochemical assays also suggesting that yes, there is significant radiation burn. Then we have uh, analyzed the, uh, you know, how this drug is, uh, you know, working on the intrinsic antioxidant machineries of the, uh, you know, uh, of the system of circulation in the uh, injured part. So we have measured the catalase and SOD activities and what we have seen that yes, uh, the ethyl pyruvate is able to, you know, take care of the catalase and SOD activities, both were found to be high in 2% ethyl pyruvate. So significantly the, you know, enhancement in the intrinsic activity of antioxidant also suggesting the, this formulation is working fine. And not only it, it, it healing up, it also, uh, it also responding and, you know, our immune system is also responding to the, you know, to the active, to the, uh, you know, healing up of the ethyl pyruvate. So this is a very interesting fact. Like if you keep on applying the ethyl pyruvate, not only it, it is helping in healing up the process, but it also, you know, helping and activating the intrinsic immune system systems so that it, it enhancing the, you know, wound repairing. So we have also performed the histopathological analysis uh, uh, where we have used an H and E uh, dyes and uh, on the control and vehicle standard and the fourth from uh, no different formulation of the tile pathway. And what we have found that in case of control, yes, uh, they have significant damage in the microstructural stain. We can see no ear follicles in lots of big vacuoles there. But if you keep on compare with the standard like Wesley and yeah, the damage is less, but you know, but uh, you know, with respect to with respect to normal skin, this microstructure is little bit you know far, but in case of one percent, you know, ethyl pyruvate and two percent, yes, the damage is very, very negligible. Uh, there's a good epidermis layer, there's a good uh, you know hair follicle structures, and you know, backward side is very, very small. So we have also measured the skin thickness. Um, so this is how we we, we take the uh, tissue sample and we uh, using a image software we we will measure the thickness in micron and uh, what we have uh, seen that yes uh, the skin thicknessing is good but it is in the case of you know standard in vastly the skin thickening is quite high but yes uh, or the overall if we summarize that yes ethyl pyruvate is working fine is working fine and giving good result as compared to standard. So we have also done the information quantification. So in this, we uh, we mark the market area on the slide and we calculate, we, we, we observe the inflammatory cell and then we, uh, you know, extrapolate those to the surface area of the slide and that we measure the, the inflammation uh, quantification. And uh, what we have seen that in control, the, you know, uh, on over a micron a square area, the inflammatory cell is quite high in control in placebo, and in fact, it is very high in the standard, which is the Vaseline. But in case of you know ethyl pyruvate, the this is quite neg negligible. So this uh, parameter is basically uh, again showing the ethyl pyruvate is a very good uh, anti-inflammatory compound because it is known anti-inflammatory compound. So here it is showing the clear indication. It's a very strong anti-inflammatory compound, but uh, it is uh, not uh, uh, you know, it not making the inflammation zero because uh, inflammation is also required for the healing process. Then we have done uh, you know uh, the stage-wise healings for the uh, for one power formulations two percent because in the study we have seen that two percent it is giving a good result. So at different time interval, how we can judge? So for example. If you, uh, you know, giving the uh, animal the application and then sacrifice at after 24 hours of radiation treatment, 
we are at the stage two when the ethrema onset then you you know, take out the you sacrifice the animal then on the onset of dry dew spermation t4 is basically the onset of moist dew spermation moist dew spermation mean that peeling of the skin with you know wetness then t5 is 2 percentile pervert with dry dew spermation and t6 2 percentile with moist dew spermation so then we have done this study and we have measured the protein content and hydroxyproline and collagen content and what we have seen that the t4 t5 t6 on all those cases where uh, you know ethyl pyruvate is being used is, is found to be higher as compared to when it is not being used for example hydroxyproline then in t6 and uh, t4 to t6 is working fine then in case of collagen t4 t6 working fine total protein content by t4 to t6 working very fine we have again uh, measured the mda sod and catalyzed assay then we have seen that in t5 to t6 is is, is giving a good results so ethyl pyruvate is working fine then uh, for the other act for catalase and protein carbonation again the t5 and t6 is giving a good result uh with service to t1 t2 t3 and t4 uh, then we have also uh, performed the histopathological analysis and uh, collagen staining and we have seen that yes uh, uh, when it is T4 and T5 and T6, and particularly T5 and T6, then the microstructure of skin is not found to be damaged with service to T1, T2, T3, and T4. So skin thickness-wise, yes, the thickness is uh, very good in T5 and T6, and inflammation-wise, when uh, it is almost see that inflammation uh, take place after three four days and we can see that yes in t3 and t4 the inflammation is quite high but when you apply the ethyl pyruvate then t5 and t6 in ethyl pyruvate is able to take care of the inflammation part so the, here uh, with the stage by studies it is also you know quite confirmed that ethyl pyruvate is working very very fine uh, this is done uh, the temporal healing profile for the prophylactic uh, drug. I don't know why this slide is appear like this, but it is a you know pictures we have taken over a time period of twenty one days, and uh, I'm sorry here that the figure are not showing. I don't know why because you know I've done we prepared in Windows and then this is a Mac laptop. Uh, if you see, then uh, uh, if you you know. Uh, uh, I, could, I I will explain you that in that part, uh, if you apply ethyl pyruvate two percent hydrogel prior to the treatment, prior to the irradiation treatment, any before uh, twenty four hours, if you start giving treatment, then you able to treat the radiation one within twenty one days. So almost you are saving twenty one days time, with service to uh, the time period done in mitigation studies. This is the achievement. Then we have uh, measured the wound contraction percentages, and in the wound contraction percentage also showing this with two uh, you know standard, and the damage skin damage score that this PP is working very 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 fine as compared to Vaseline. So uh, this is a you know very unique study, and why this uh, prophylactic drug uh, you know uh, application of this drug is required that if in case you require to send emergency responders, rescue personnel, a team with detection systems. And uh, if you not, uh, you know, after, in fact, they they will wear their protective gears. But even though uh, there is a chance that in case of high energy uh, photons, they might, uh, protective gears are, might not be in position to save that person. So they might uh, get the radiation burn. So in that case, there must be some interventional modalities to save this person from radiation burns. So therefore, uh, with that purpose, we, we, we initiated the study and to see that whether this our drug will uh, working uh, in a prophylactic way or not. So what we have seen, yes, uh, this is working very well. Then we perform the biochemical assays on the, uh, the skin part. The skin part we have taken after the second time period and then we, we could be prepared the homogenate. We measured the protein content and we, we, we observed that uh, the 2% ethyl pyruvate, the 
protein content were almost two times better than as compared to control. And then we measured the hydroxyproline and collagen. Yes, again here, the collagen or or the you know in the collagen in, in the hydroxyproline uh, it is almost uh, uh, you know four to five times better than as compared to control. And in the uh, collagen part, it is almost three times better than compared to control. Uh, the MDA, which is you know a, a damage marker, so here we see the decrease in the MDA content in two percent ethyl pyruvate, and the SOD and the catalase activity, which is a, again an indicator of the healing. There we find that the SOD activity and the catalase activity were found to be higher in two percent ethyl pyruvate. The histopathological analysis again indicating that yes, the damage is there, but it is not as much as uh, we service to standard and control. And uh, this is we have done on the uh, 50 micron regulation. And we see, can we can see that the vector size is not there and uh, you know, skin showing the normal microstructure. Uh, skin thickness and the information quantification uh, again showing that the 2 percentile pyruvate is uh, doing very well. Uh, in the thickness part, it is almost you know close to the uh, the standard. But in the inflammatory part, uh, we have we can see that uh, if the standard is at hundred percent, then uh, your uh, inflammatory cells per uh, per square micron size area is is uh, is about about around ten percent. So it is almost you know ten times better than the standard in terms uh, when we do the inflammation quantification. So almost it will save the person if your person in uh, before applying before entering to the radiation contaminated area. If we apply the this ethyl pyruvate hydrogel, then it he, that this person maybe get uh, be uh, safe again the radiation burns. So this is guys. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, patient listening to me. And uh, now uh, uh, overall, I I would like to sum up my presentation like this. Uh, we be an institute or in a defense uh, working uh, for you know you know for preparing our armed forces and paramilitary forces uh, for uh, you know any response for uh, any response in the uh, radiation uh, or nuclear eventualities so if any contamination exposure there then we need to uh, prepare our armed force for any response and with this aim we have prepared different diagnostic and therapeutic and therapeutic uh, modalities. And in that, this is a very small step. And our team is working very hard to develop this topical formulation. And I hope so that in near future, we will uh, come up with more such things and will help in strengthening our country. So with this, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.